everyone, my name's Erin. I am just going to show you a few poses to help ease some strain in your lower back and hopefully give you some relief if you're having some low back pain. So before we get started, make sure that you have all of the props that you're going to need. Um, one or two yoga blocks, if you have only one, that's fine. Some books would also work. If you know that you have tight hamstrings, go ahead and grab a blanket or a towel. I've just used a beach towel and I folded it up so when you sit down on it, you sit down on an edge and it just tilts your pelvis down, but I'll talk about talk about that more later. And I also have two pillows. If you happen to have a bolster or two, then those work great. So just grab those. I wanted to make this accessible for those of you who don't have a lot of yoga props. Okay, so we're gonna start with cat cow. So the idea here is that you're bringing your back um, between flexion and extension. So come into a tabletop position with your wrists below your shoulders and your knees below your hips at about hip distance apart. This is your neutral tabletop position, making sure that you engage your belly. So you're pressing the organs into the spine and really helping protect the low back. So you can really make this as um, exciting, I guess you could say, so simple or complex. So if you just wanna do something more simple, it looks like this, linking breath to movement. You inhale, drop the belly and look up. Exhale, round through the spine. So you're pressing into the mat firmly with your hands. And as you do that, you tuck your tailbone and press your the front hip points towards your arms. If you wanna get more involved, you can bend the elbows and get the elbows involved as well, which is actually my preferred way to do cat cow because you just get into the shoulder joints and give the pecs a little bit of a workout too. And that looks like this. And again, the less enthusiastic version would be this. So no matter which version you, version you choose, make sure you're linking breath to movement. Again, the inhale is the cow. So you think about dropping your udders down to the ground and the exhale is the cat. So you're arching your back like a cat. So no matter which version, again, you're moving, you're getting movement in the pelvis and in the lower back. And when you have better control of your pelvis, you have better control of your lower back as well. And you should be able to feel when you're out of alignment, when you're standing or sitting. So especially if you're standing at the sink washing dishes, let's say, um, it's really easy to let your butt stick out. So this is like a sway back or a banana back, you might hear it called. Really, this is compressing our low back and it's just not healthy for the spine. So work on bringing the tailbone under. So if you don't have this kind of movement in your pelvis and your low back, that's okay. You just have to keep working on it. Okay, so the next pose I wanted to do was a downward facing dog. So you don't really need a yoga mat for any of these except maybe downward facing dog, especially if you're doing it on carpet. I find that my hands and feet tend to slip. So for downward facing dog, you start in the tabletop alignment like we were before for cat cow. Walk your palms about one palm width ahead of you. Press down firmly in the roots of the hand or the roots of the finger, so right here, to take some of the pressure off the wrist. Grip the mat with the tips of your fingers. When you're ready, you tuck your toes under and lift your seat up and back to down dog. So here, just keep your knees nice and soft. So nice soft bend in the knee. There's no reason for you to straighten them unless you like to do so. Your head and your neck relaxes, your gaze is back at your ankles and your feet. Your belly is nice and firmly engaged. So if you see a lot of yogis and they look like they have little itty bitty tiny waist, it's not necessarily that we just have little itty bitty tiny waist, it's that our bandhas, our energy locks are being engaged, especially in downward facing dog. So here, if you look at my waist, my belly is soft, my bandhas are not engaged. Then as you engage, there's my little teeny tiny waist. So keeping your little, your little teeny tiny waist thought, your bond is engaged, that presses your um, internal organs into your spine and gives it support. So here, we're just gonna hang out here for as much as you can. If you don't normally practice yoga, this can be very hard um, in the upper body because it does require a fair bit of strength to continue holding yourself here. Stay here for about three to five breaths, maybe 10, if you have the upper body strength to continue this motion. 
This is just a nice entire back body stretch. So you're stretching out the spine, all of the muscles along the spine, the muscles in the backs of the shoulders, and the muscles that run along behind the legs. So if you find that you are comfortable here, you can start bringing some movement into your legs, pedaling out your feet, straightening one leg, bending the other, and this just helps bring some motion, some blood flow back into the back of the legs. The hamstrings, the calves, they all need a lot of love. And if you have tight hamstrings, this is a really great exercise to do. Okay, so that's the second one. And then we're gonna move on to bridge. So the most important thing about bridge is that you move your pelvis back. So you think about scooping your tailbone, which is like this, you scoop it under. So come to lay down on your back. Bring your feet so they're about hip distance apart with the soles of the feet flat on the mat. You can, if you have a block, you can use it here and place it in between your knees. Otherwise, if you don't have a block or you just don't like it, then just work the action of bringing the knees together. We don't actually want them to touch, but we want, as we think about bringing the knees together, it activates the adductors, the inner muscles of the thighs, and helps, those help bring you up instead of just our massive glute muscles. So, I'll use the block just to show you. So before you start lifting your hips, I want you to find your hip points in the front. They're very bony. So you work on pulling them towards you. And I don't know if you can see very well, but if you look down here at my butt, here's my hip points and I pull them towards me. So as you do that, you'll feel your abdominals engage and your, the small of your back comes flat to the mat. That's what we want. So place your hands down by your side. I'm just gonna do the very simple version of bridge for you. And keeping your pelvis tilted like this with your tailbone scooped under and the small of your back flat on the mat, you slowly, as you squeeze your belly, inhale, lift up. And you can pause here, and then as you exhale, lower down. And as you lower down, try to keep that scooped motion in the tailbone. So when you lower down, the lower back comes down all the way to the mat. So versus if I let my, my tailbone dip like normal, so you can see the curve of my lower back. I don't know if you can see it, but my fingers are sliding under my back. So when you tuck the tailbone under, Pull my hand out. Tuck the tailbone under, your back is now flat to the mat. So you can go through these, I would say do at least three. You can do up to 10. So if you're fit, um, you can try 10. Just knowing to be gentle with your body, especially if you're not very active. Don't force anything. If you feel any sharp pains, come out immediately and very slowly and discontinue the routine. If you feel just slightly discom some slight discomfort, then you can stick it out as long as you feel safe in your body. This is really a decision that you're going to have to make. So again, inhale, lift up. Squeezing that block or squeezing the inner thighs towards each other. Exhale, rolling down the spine. And then the tailbone comes down last. So if you need a little bit of a cheat, you can do it with the block or without. I'll remove the block and show you. So again, Pull those hip points towards you. You can keep your hands here if that helps you. Inhale, lift up. And then as you exhale, coming down, if you feel like you can't keep your low back from being lifted up off the mat, lift your toes up and then come down. Or lift your heels up, I apologize. So you lift up onto your toes, lifting your heels up, and that will give you a little bit more space to come down. Again, inhale up. Exhale, come down. And that's it. So really try hard not to let your glutes take over in that pose. Uh, they do help you get up, but we want to make sure that as you lower down, you're not clenching your glutes really firmly. Okay, so two more. Locust, come down onto your belly. So as I mentioned in my blog post, if you have had a history of back pain or back surgery, herniated discs, anything like that, really, really talk to your doctor before you engage in any type of physical exercise, whether it be yoga or not. So locust can be quite difficult. Um, you might find that you're only able to do one of these or maybe you can't do it at all and that's totally okay. So just start where you are today and know that even that you're just trying this, you're making progress. So I'm gonna move these so you can see a little bit better. So, locust is really gonna strengthen these little muscles in the back here. So it's important that you don't just hinge back which is gonna cause more compression in the lower back and cause more discomfort because you're compressing the vertebral discs. So, 
If you want to start out using your hands here, this really is not locust but um, cobra pose, you can absolutely do that. So take your feet and press the tops of your feet firmly down into the mat. As you do that, your quadriceps activate and your kneecaps lift so your knees are not on the mat. And then on an inhale, you lift up. Keeping a slight tone in your belly, just look forward. If you feel any compression in the lower back at all, please stop immediately. You exhale, come down. Inhale, lift up. Keeping a tone in the belly, and you are pressing into the mat with your hands, but you're also using the muscles in your back to help lift you up. The other version that you can do is just place your hands down here, and you can rest your head down on your hands. Or the full version is you lay your hands down by your side with the palms face down, thumbs point out. Then just to do the feet, you inhale and lift up one or both legs. So don't crane your neck by trying to look up. Just keep your neck neutral, looking down at the mat. Exhale, legs down. You can try one or both legs. If you're new to this, I recommend just one leg at a time. So you're lifting at the hip, not at the knee. So the leg tries to stay straight as you lift up. You should feel some engagement in the glute and in the low back. Again, sensation is okay. Mild discomfort is a normal part of yoga, but pain absolutely is not. If you feel pain, please stop right away. So lastly, seated forward fold. So if you know that you have tight hamstrings, most men have very tight hamstrings, um, go ahead and get your blanket. If you know that you're a little bit more flexible, then maybe you don't need it. So the main thing to know about seated forward fold, and I wrote quite a bit so I won't talk too much, is that we're moving from the pelvis. So the hip flexors, the psoas muscles, are what brings you forward. They're what brings the pelvis forward. So you want this tipping action. So if you think of your pelvis as like, like a bowl, a pelvic bowl, you tilt it forward and whatever liquid is inside spills out. And that's what we want out of this pose. So again, if you have tight hamstrings or tight or shortened hip flexors, you place this blanket under your butt, okay? So, and then after you do that, you kind of slide to the edge. You should feel this pelvis tilting right away. And even as you fold forward, you'll feel it even more. So your feet are up straight, but you can let them relax if it's too much. You can take a pillow and put it under your knees. Probably a softer pillow would be better because we don't want to well, the knees very, very bent. So inhale, sit up nice and tall, pull your shoulders down and back. And as you exhale, you fold forward. The second, the very second that you feel that your back starts to do this and rounding into the spine, stop there and back off. You want to lead with the chest. Okay, so if your forward fold looks like this today, that's okay. If your forward fold looks like this, that's fine too. Okay, so that's pretty much all I had to say. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to shoot me an email or just leave a comment on the blog post. I will be more than happy to answer your questions. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope this helps with some back pain. Namaste.